Hi everybody, I hope everyone's doing well. So, uh, I got back from the Blaze Show a couple days ago. Uh, you know, even though I live in Georgia, uh, still took me a little bit of time to kind of get back home and settled in and everything. Because uh, it was a very, very, very fun weekend for me. Uh, I absolutely love the Atlanta Blaze Show. Um, to me, it's the best three days out of the year for me. It's better than my birthday and Christmas combined. And that's saying something. Uh, because I get to check out some really sweet knives. And I get to see a lot of friends. So, Blaze Show this year is a little funny for a lot of people. Just because you don't have a lot of your foreign makers. Like, the, you know, a lot of the makers from Japan. From South Africa. And all of your European makers. Uh, so, it's very disappointing. Uh, that's actually kind of <laughs> goes into uh, some of my show pickups because of that. Um, I was actually supposed to grab a knife from a French maker since he didn't show up. Well, you know, I didn't grab one. So, in a weird, funny way that I had some extra money <laughs> from that, uh, I really only had one pickup and one plan purchase this year. Uh, this was my delivery uh, by Jim Rodebach. And this was actually my only planned pickup, which is a uh, Lin Ray X Ray. All right, I'll get a little more into them. So for my delivery, uh, is a James Rodebach uh, liner lock folder. Uh, he doesn't do a, a tremendous amount of folders, but you know, since he's an ABS master smith, they're known to be doing all the forge and the fixed blade work. And thing is, is you know what's make this one so interesting, is that it just shows that they're so, you know, t multi talented because it's a completely different school of thought that they have to uh, conquer and able to do this. And this is a very fine and well executed folding knife. You know, the lockup is solid. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah, how many makers I can do this and pop the lock. Uh, let's, that's a different video. And so good lock up. Uh, you know, centering is good. I think it's, it's a touch, touch bias to a size of probably time to pivot. Uh, very smooth knife. You know, very smooth. Uh, it's running on Teflon washers. Um, you know, this is a sole authorship boomerang Damascus. Uh, it's got some patina on it from me using it. All right. Uh, let's see, the thumb stud, uh, I forgot to ask what that stone he inlaid in there. Uh, looks like a titanium thumb stud. Uh, the bolster, bolster, <laughs> the bolster is, a uh, mosaic Damascus, uh, that's been, uh, nitro salt blued. Uh, this side, it looks a lot nicer. Uh, let's see if I get the lighting to show, it, it's just not gonna show up. Um, it's a very nice purple. Um, there's some spots there from the water getting through a saran wrap when I was trying to make a sheath for this. So, yeah, that's on me. That's, that's not from the, and of course the patina from use. Um, you know, this is a crazy, crazy thin, thinly ground knife. I mean, I like mine crazy thin, but this is taking it to a next level. It's three thou behind the edge. I, I, I just mic'd it this morning. I was like, holy cow. Yeah, super impressive. Absolutely gorgeous knife. Really love this, uh, jade bone for the handle scales. It is, it is a very, very lovely piece, you know, and then the, the liners have, you know, uh, you know, heat treated. So yeah, this is, uh, my delivery, uh, but it was actually not my first pickup, uh, because Jim's table was, uh, pretty busy, so I actually had to go up to him about three separate times until he actually had the window to, uh, sit down and talk with me about this knife, all right, and then, uh, my other... My, my plan purchase, I wasn't sure if Lynn Ray was going to be there at the show this year. So, I, uh, you know, when I saw that his table was there, I was super excited because I wanted an x-ray. I've already got some patina on it from cutting some food uh, and stuff. So, yeah, I'm definitely not babying this. Uh, it's kind of funny when I bought it from Lynn's, uh, he asked me, uh, you know, if I plan on using it because I bought this with a sheath. Uh, I think he's probably a little confused by it uh, because uh, I'm actually in the middle of making a pocket sheet for this. Uh, but that's actually how I prefer to carry a fixed blade about this size or smaller. I just don't like them having on my belt. Uh, 
so you know so you know here's all patina so i tagged him in on instagram uh it's a fantastic user and it's a blacksmith knife you know this is the coolest blacksmith knife ever made uh just because of this you see how that you know pin is riveted in so he says like you have to forge you know this piece out there and he files in a rivet and he drift a hole and he pins it so this is a, a mechanically bonded piece there so this is all an integral you know there's you know i mean i added this bit but it's a solid knife literally it's a solid knife no wood scales no g10 scales no nothing to break i mean this is just steel and uh let me see if i can if it'll show it may not pick up in the lighting like in some specific lighting you can kind of see uh the temper line where he edge quenched it uh because it's 80 crv2 so one you know 80 crv2 is already a really tough steel well you have essentially a ductile state of 80 crv2 for the rest of this knife this is as tough and strong as they come for a knife it, it really is it's absolutely amazing and i love this style um just because like i've always liked the blacksmith knives or rather i don't really like them but this made me appreciate and love with the blacksmith knives yeah uh, even more because usually uh because i've made a few myself uh what most people end up doing is you know they forge his tail then they wrap it around and they have it bring it all the way up here and that's it they call it a day so it's really usually really springy or and you know, or it's, it'd be so tight and narrow that it's just very uncomfortable uncomfortable to grab lynn solves this by one you know not only does he actually uh you know forge wider on the stock here so you got more uh, you know, material here, uh, more flat spot to grab. He also flattened out, uh, you know, the, the the rest of this, like his handle. So it's a very, so it's it's a, a three-dimensional knife, absolutely. It's just like a, a two-dimensional, you have just your blade stock, you forge down the, the, you know, the thickness of the tail. Usually, you know, it's the same stock, but this one starts off, you know, at this thickness, if I remember. Yeah, it starts off at this thickness, and Lynn kind of forges everything down, and you can kind of tell, you know, this transition from the handle to the Ricasso here. That's very difficult and very accurate forging. Like, this is a true, tried and true blacksmith knife. And I really appreciate all the work that goes into it. It's a very simple knife, but it's a very tricky knife to make because you got to manage your materials and stuff just right. Uh, because the only thing that was ground on this is the bevels. That's it. These are the only two surfaces on this whole knife that's been ground so you got to be good at forging it and you know why he actually had a piece there that was just forged out as forged it was just so cool seeing all the bevel and anything for it so he just had to clean it up clean up the bevels that's it so goes to show what you know a skill of a master smith can do you know between these two knives you know and it's, it's just kind of funny like these two are totally opposite end of the spectrum whereas in uh, no, almost, you know, because the blades have to be forged out and everything, too. But they're both made by Master Smith, but this one requires some more precision, you know, machining to make. And this one is just, you know, old school skills. You know, I mean, they're both very, you know, highly skilled, you know, required uh, means of making knives. But they're just two different ends of the spectrum. You know, because it's like looking at my, you know, my Stan Wilson is probably the best example here. This is very high precision machined out knife versus this is a very high precise forged out knife so it's really really cool all right so you know so with those two out of the way uh my first blade show pickup on friday was actually this uh, american phantom uh i was very drawn to this knife uh i this knife was actually completely under my radar i didn't even it was off my radar rather uh my friend alex khan was like Yo, you gotta check this guy out. Like his work's really nice. And one, I was I've actually followed him on Instagram, but I, I didn't even know that's what it's bringing. But you know, it happens when you follow like five thousand people on Instagram. Like only so people, many people can you know go on your feed. So I was just like, I was really drawn to this blade because this grind is so good. Um, you know, I love like this is not my typical style to go for, but I really like how he did this grind. Whereas then he has your tanto point, your main bevel. But the way he cut this wedge in for this facet, I just love the way all these you know facets intersect. So it's not like just a typical like a tanto where you almost have like um, 
a very abrupt or no transition on the spine and stuff but i love how smooth this just sweeps into everything and just have a really nice package and gives the illusion that you know this is a bigger knife than what it is it's a three inch blade i thought it was like a three and three and a half inch blade and it's that's kind of crazy but it's a three inch blade uh it looks bigger than what it is and the overall fit and finish is absolutely superb uh, you know, just look at it. You know, I love just the color accents on here. Like, it's just enough color to make it interesting. Uh, not enough to just be over the top and too busy. Um, he had an open bit piece that's in, uh, Timaska's, you know, framing. I'm just like, that, that's just, that's just not me. And I really love the whole patterns here. Like, it's just got enough to make it look, just draw your eye to it. And I think it just looks really nice. Alright. And, uh, yeah, I was not planning on picking a, uh, you know, a frame lock of uh, this show. I, I really wasn't. So this was kind of one of my surprise pickups. And it kind of shows just kind of how, you know, funny Blade Show is. You end up looking around and you find things you don't expect to pick up. Granted, there's people who probably went through the show just for this knife. And I end up, I ended up with it, you know, through a lotto uh, because I got very lucky um, because me and a bunch of our friends were all entered. Uh, and my friend Eric actually got drawn but uh, he gave up his spot to uh, let me buy it, so that's how I ended up with it. And uh, I really adore this. So there is that. So then, uh, you know, this is a really cool piece. <laughs> and uh, because uh, actually I actually stumbled onto this one uh, while I was uh, waiting on Jim's table to clear out so I can pick up this guy. Uh, so I was just kind of wandering nearby, and then um, and I was I noticed the name of W D Peace, <laughs> you know, Peace Peace, um, and you know I've seen Mister Peace's work on like Arizona Custom Knives and occasionally on Blade Forms, but I've never seen it in person. The works always look really clean and well executed, so I wasn't sure what to expect. But when I saw this in person, you know, let's looking at the file works. You know, this beautiful stag, like, this is incredible. I just love, the, the stag's what drew me to it. Uh, I'm usually a very much of a mechanism person. He had a side lock that was, I was very close to picking up. Uh, you know, I, I like everything about it. Like, if the blade shape was a little bit different, like, if it had, like, this blade shape instead of, let's see, this blade shape, it had this blade shape on the muskox, um, handle scale and I think uh shoot what was the bolster material I think it was like uh I think it was blued is it a blued uh uh mosaic uh bolster or it was uh time mask I don't remember it was it was it was a different color uh but the the stag drew me to it and just the overall package of this knife drew me to it just nice you know beautifully hand rubbed satin blade a uh Mosaic Damascus bolster to accent it and this gorgeous stag like uh, it, It's just got just enough Artistic touch and just enough cleanliness just to really make this piece stand out and it's really cool. That's a double back lock You know, and you don't see those very often usually you see like them in slip joints or something But he does this in a way it's so clean because I really don't care for the cutout too much either but because you know he you know the handle curves down so far and and he has uh, this, you know, the back lock actually being proud. Is, I mean, it, it doesn't really engage with your hand. Your hand's not really pressing or you're using it. So it's, you know, completely safe. And, I, and I've used this knife already. Uh, carried it the other day. Carries great. Um, you know, so it works really well. Uh, just G10 uh, backspacer, not a big deal. I mean, it's just something there. Not too worried about it. I guess it's there to kind of the colors to complement with the bark of the stag. But another thing that really drew me is just look at this file work. Now, you know, let's play a game. Where does the blade end and the lock begins? That is, you know, it's not for just one, but both of them. Um, you know, it's very often we see, uh, you know, knives where you can, it's kind of obvious transition is and stuff. But this one is built so tight, like, you see where that is? But, like, that is tight. I mean, it's impressive how tight it is. And I'm, I'm holding it and seeing it in person, and it still, like, wows me every time. That is so tight. 
You know, so, you know, I was looking at this and <laughs> I guess the way I looked at it and Mr. Peace was asking me just if I made knives and I'm just like kind of dabble a little bit and he just gave me like a 30 minute lecture on how to make lockback folders. And I, it was so, I was, you know, it was so information overload that, uh, and he also invited me to his shop. So he's like, yeah, it'd be easier to see. Uh, I, I wasn't expecting that at all. So I'm super stoked. And I really hope I'll be able to cash in on that. Uh, he is just such a nice man. And to invite me to his shop, I'm even more excited, especially when he does this level of work. Uh, it's absolutely incredible, which also goes to show like part of why Blaze Show is so cool because this is just this is not just a knife. You know, this is part of the experience I have with Mr. Peace. Uh, just at his table talking to him. You know, he invited me to, he's invited me to his shop and stuff. Just, you know, and he you know, spent a night and he's going to teach me what, you know, he's what he knows. I mean, that's very generous. And I've never met Mr. Peace until like the day of the show. So, I'm super tickled by, you know, my experience with him. Uh, and the work is just fantastic, and I'm really excited to actually go learn from him. So maybe I got some, you know, more lock lockback folders coming in, so maybe I have a little less failures. So, you know, this one having the opening on, you know, the other side. So, you know, while, while I bought this, uh, between this and the other knife, I was rationalizing, you know what? I'm buying two knives <laughs> in one. <laughs> because in effect, you kind it kind of is... You, have, you know, it is two knives, because you have to make a whole separate blade in, in the lock and the back spring and everything. So this was a really, really cool pickup, and I'm just super stoked. It's one of those things I was going to put it down and come back for it, but it also hit me that, you know, this is going to be one of those knives that I know I will regret not buying. And as much as I enjoy having this on me and just kind of, you know, throwing it in my pocket, and uh, I think my gut was right, I would have regret not buying this if I didn't grab it. So there is that. All right, moving down the list. So I think I'm gonna go in like a, a quasi chronological order uh, now because technically the order was I got uh, the Phantom, uh, got the double lock back, uh, and then I went to uh, I stumped onto uh, found Todd, go grab this uh, razor back from Todd, and then shoot, what else did I grab? Uh, went and grabbed the Lin Ray. Uh, actually, I grabbed the, the Rotobot, and then I grabbed the Lin Ray, and then I grabbed the bag, uh, and then grabbed uh, the TRM uh, Neutron, uh, went into the Demco table uh, booth, uh, grabbed one of the AD 20.5. Uh, this is actually my second one. The first one I gave to my friend Bruce Rugg, who let me stay at his place, so that was my thank you gift. And then I also grabbed this... Uh, uh, Seijin uh, Gaucho knife uh, because uh, I, I just think these are super cool because I've I've been a big fan of like the Gaucho knives ever since I've seen them like Nat Geo and Bizarre Food and you know those like those shows. All right, moving on. So, uh, you know, I've said Todd Beg, Todd Beg will be the next knife to talk about. So I was always wandering over to the booths uh, because I was actually trying to go to the Hawks table and I stumbled onto Todd's uh, table and so I was like, so I was just kind of looking at some of the war junkie stuff, which uh, I really am not that interested into, um, just because I got you know fixed blades like this that that really you know satisfies me. But this one's really cool because it's actually a Todd Bay custom that he's made uh, several years ago, and the dealer had a few left, and so it's pretty much like you know new old stock and just wanted them gone. So this was at a very, very good price, and I was really mulling over it, and it just feels amazing in hand. Like, Todd really knows his ergos on his fixed blades. Uh, it's really the size of my uh, current, uh, my uh, wolf chopper. Uh, it's, it's a knife by uh, Pavel Wolf that's out from, uh, I think, one of the Eastern European countries, probably Ukraine as well. That was my primary chopper, but this might sub in for that one. Um, because this one just makes me want to go in the woods and chop stuff down. Like it, it just feels so good. Uh, you can carry this guy around on um, on Saturday uh, because I just have so much crap in my bag. And the sheath that it came with, whoops, I didn't mean to do that bump. That you know it carried so well. It's a very well made sheath. Let's see if I can show the maker. Yeah, so it is a Mackie. Uh, out in Texas. Uh, let's see, Blanket, Texas. 
fantastic sheath. Like, uh, yeah, if, if you're, you probably know of this maker if you're in Texas or something. Um, but I was very impressed by this sheath. So, awesome combo. Like, I didn't even know I had, a, like, this big knife strapped to my thigh for most of the day. Like, it was that good. All right, moving on. So, real quick, TRM, uh, Neutron. So, the scale draw me to it, uh, but the main reason I got this is because I got a spare Atom blade that I did a harpoon grind on, but the blade ended up being way too short for the Atom frame, so I didn't like it. So, I'm going to see if I can match it to this uh, Neutron frame. Uh, so that's really the main reason why I bought this, and then the Jakarta was just kind of a little bonus. Uh, I was just like, yeah, for like, you know, like, what 20 bucks extra yeah, i'll get one to g card just because if i'm stuck with this knife i might as well be stuck with a knife that i would actually enjoy and, and that's something really important to you know to kind of think about since we're on it is that you know buy what you're willing to be stuck with don't buy thinking you can resell don't buy you can think because sometimes you'll be very disappointed in things that you think you're gonna buy to resell sometimes it works out like uh like my buddy alex you know he probably bought like an extra arias to flip and um and i think he flipped it already so and he kept one for himself you know so next down the line is the ad20 uh 0.5 you know the shark with the shark lock and mine's different because it has a switch grind and um uh, I, I i ground this myself and i think it gives it a more complete look because even the custom didn't have a switch grind and then as soon as i saw you know the first picture of the ad20s as a clip point no swedge grinds like it needs a swedge. I just knew it, especially with that that classic you know buoy look. So you know my thoughts on this. I love this. I think this is a better buy than a custom. All right. I I legit think this is a better buy for the custom than a custom because for a hundred fifty dollars you can beat on this as much as you want and not feel bad. Versus like a four hundred dollar custom that the secondary is going for what six seven hundred dollars, you're not going to beat on it quite nearly as much. But this one, you can beat it on it and not feel bad. You can buy an extra one to put, you know, hang back in case if you do break this one. You know, this one is on ball bearings, so it's got a fantastic action. All right, and the shark lock is really fun lock. It's it's a very fidgety knife. This knife, I feel I should have won the production knife of the year, and this should definitely also have been the best buy of the blade show, just because on Saturday, uh, uh, Demco booth had just two cases full of these. By Sunday around noon, I went back to get my second one. Um, this was the last clip point they had, and they had two more sheep, sheep's foot. That's how fast they went. I was very impressed. I was just like, oh yeah, they're going to have plenty. I can just take my sweet time going over there. I'm glad I went there when I did, because there was a fellow behind me, uh, wanted a clip point. Guess what? I got it, and I already paid a guy. So this one was mine. He ain't getting it. <laughs> so tough luck, buddy, but you just got to wait. So, and I'm very impressed by this. Like, rock saw the lockup up, down, left, right, everywhere. All right, and compared to custom, just as much. Uh, this is actually built thinner than the custom, which I definitely prefer, especially for EDC. The custom's a little chunky. Uh, so, you know, and my friend Eric uh, had a custom with him. And I really loved it because I really appreciate all the engineering work that uh, Demco put in because he put steel where steel's needed and nowhere else. Like, in the custom, like, the, the steel's only in, like, this part of the knife which makes sense because that's to secure the shark lock and everything the rest is just kind of hold the furniture together uh this one actually has full steel liners uh, i'm not sure if you can see that it has full steel liners so it's gonna be plenty strong and uh you know and the people who are concerned about the pivot being on ball bearings i mean realistically if you're gonna do prying and stuff you're gonna snap your blade before you're ever gonna you know rip this shred this pivot you know so let's be real and it's a very good very strong lock very stoked about it uh, you know, kind of threw this on e eBay for giggles, but if it doesn't sell, then bother me at all because uh, I'm going to get another one right after anyway. Because I do really like these. You know, I still stand by what I've said about this ship in the production after the year. So there's that. All right, up next, all right, we have this, you know, Seijin or Seijin, you know, the Hygiena, which I think is just indicated as a stainless steel. Uh, it's just 440C stainless steel, uh, you know. Uh, 58, 59, 60-ish Rockwell. I don't know what it is. I don't really care. Um, you know, this is a gaucho knife. Uh, because uh, when I watch Bizarre Food Nat Geo way back in the day, you know, when they show the gauchos and they pull it off, I was like, that is such a cool knife. 
you know so when i saw it at the table which i was a little sad because they were in the second room and they were not getting a lot of attention everyone's looking at all these other shinier stuff i'm just like when i saw that I, was like, I know exactly what that is and i'm gonna have to get it i also picked up a kit version where they have just the the sheath and a blade and no handle so i can install my own handle on there however i want to do it so i'll probably show that off once um uh you know get around to making that and also they had like a heat treated fork, which was really cool. The guy was just like, hey, look at what my fork can do. And he bend it and it just springs right back. I said, oh, that's really funny. They heat treated their fork. Because most of your forks aren't heat treated. They're just, you know, uh, mild stainless steel. So when they take a set, they take a set. So it was really cool. So it was like $4. I was like, eh, why not? I can buy a fork for $4. So there is that. So, you know, this knife, nothing too special, very basic. Um, you know, it looks like a kitchen knife and it works as a kitchen knife because it's grown very thin behind the edge, you know, and a lot of those gaucho knives were actually repurposed kitchen knives. And, um, uh, you know, they wear these in their boots or in their sash. And, um, uh, you know, this is the sheath that it came with. Uh, you know, I like this metal steel sheath and this little clip to, you know, tuck it into the sash or, you know, tuck it in a boot. Very nice package, and I really love this. This whole freaking thing is like 55 bucks. It was a no-brainer, so I was super stoked about how cheap this is, which is why I can beat this up and not feel bad, which I probably won't. I mean, I'm, you know, actually I probably will because I do have technically a spare blade for it. So there is that. Okay, so my big surprise purchase. I was not expecting to pick up another Stan Wilson. Um, so this is a Stan Wilson Gents. Uh, the one of his customers couldn't make it to the show, so Stan had an extra knife to sell. Uh, I don't know why he just didn't like, hey, just mail it to me or something. I don't know. So Stan had an extra knife, so I was just like, you know what? Yeah, I'll take it. You know, he had, I actually let my friend Alex get first dibs, but he he didn't want to spend that kind of money just yet. And I just thought, I was like, you know, this is kind of better than cash right now. You know, so and uh, yeah, so I had the opportunity. I was like, yeah, I'm getting it. I'll, I'll be an idiot not to grab another Stan Wilson. This is going to be an investment piece for me. You know, so just, just look at that. Full diamond steel backspacer, diamond steel blade, diamond steel bolsters, uh, mammoth. I'm pretty sure it's mammoth ivory scales. Uh, this is actually too nice for me to carry in use. I have a plain one with stainless steel bolsters and CF uh, scales and then uh, diamond steel blade. So that's more of my user. This is just gonna be staying mint. Uh, you can uh, try to call me on it or whatever. I'm not gonna use it. I'm just not. This is very much an investment grade knife. So I'm gonna keep it nice and mint and just enjoy looking at it because I got all these to use to cut with. I don't have to cut with this one. This one, I can just look at it and appreciate the craftsmanship that's involved with this. I mean, just look at how seamless you know everything is and you know this is all hidden screw construction you know this is not pinned together this is all screwed together you know this one you see screws very nice knife but you see screws this one very nice knife you see screws this one very nice knife you don't you see screws no screws which is really cool it's tricky to make you know it's a very simple looking knife you know, again, just like this, how this is a simple looking knife, but it takes a high skill to make. This is a simple looking knife. It takes very high skill, you know, to make. So, you know, the subtleties of details. And that's really where, you know, a lot of the fun of you know, the Blade Show is. You can kind of check out some of the really well-known makers, or you can check out sometimes some of the lesser known makers. You know, uh, it's one of the funny thing is that you know, Mr. Peace has several pieces left uh, at the end of the show, which I was very sad about because he had fantastic work. But he's not, you know, very uh, social media savvy or anything. So there's not a lot of hype around his work. But you don't need hype around this work. The work will speak for itself. You know, so there's that. Uh, you know, you know uh, Americans on Instagram, he sold out really quick. I know he has do lotto. His books are closed. Uh, and I'm very fortunate I got this. But, you know, frankly, I, I think this is actually a more exciting knife just because it is such a different knife to make. And I've made two backlogs. They are tricky. They are very tricky to make. And to make them to this level of precision, it's, it's incredible. And, you know, so, all right. 
play show. You know, it's fun. It, it, it truly is fun. And, you know, and this is just some of my pickups. And not to mention a lot of these other knives that I really wanted to pick up, but I just didn't see a need to. Especially, like, among very many of the ABS Mastersmith. They have these beautiful mosaic and really densely pattern-welded, like, fighters and stuff. I got a bunch of fighters already. I don't need another one that just kind of sits there and collect dust. But the work is so incredible. All right? And you know, it's just one of those things that why are you, are you going to waste your money chasing after some of these, you know, folder makers that you think that are, are, are you know, who are absolutely are producing great work, but you got to wait in line, you got to do all these, you gotta, there's so many hoops to jump through, and you still have, you know, these sometimes, I would say, le you know, little less popular makers with books open, with spots, you know, use the time at Blaze Show to find those, you know, hidden gems that's, you know, being overlooked. Because, you know, once you're trying to get, you know, another knife like a Michael Birch or something, it's hard. I want a Birch. But guess what? I'm probably never going to get one. So I'll just look somewhere else, you know. And unless I get lucky, because sometimes when you have your heart set on something so much, you kind of set yourself, yourself up for a lot of disappointment. You know, uh, a couple years ago, like, you know, with Rad Knives, he makes his own Damascus and, and Timascus and everything. He's super cool and whatnot. But here it is, a sole authorship knife that costs significantly less. Granted, it's all carbon steel, carbon Damascus, but the work is really good. And it's very gentlemanly. You know, yeah, most people are like, oh, it doesn't have a pocket clip. Well, I can very easily make a leather sheath with a pocket clip on it. This takes me a day to do it. Or I can ask someone else to do it for me for like, you know, seven, 70 to $80. I'm still be ahead of the game. So there's always very skilled, very talented makers out there that could use more attention. Um, you know, granted, some of these are still fairly mainstream. You know, like, you know, people completely overlook this, but I, I'm, this is one of my happiest pickups. Yes, it was like $55. You know, it, it was, it's so good. And, you know, I, and it's not like I'm trying to be a cheapskate because I picked up a Stan Wilson and his knives are not cheap. You know, this is not a cheap knife. Neither is this. Neither is this one. You know, I, I brought several grand with me. And uh, I I managed to come home with some lunch money still, but I spent way more than I should have. Um, but that's also, the, you know, that's the fun of the show. And the icing, the icing on the cake is the people. All right. You owe it to yourself to go just check out the knives. But sometimes not, it's not even, actually not sometimes, all the time. It's not even about the knives. It's about the people. The first two years at Blade, uh, you know, was fun for me. I went there, checked out the knives, came back home. That's it. But following year, when I actually got to know some of the makers, when I got to know some of the friends from the EDC community and stuff, get to hang out with them, have a beer, have a, you know, you know, share a meal with them and everything, it just completely changed the experience. My best friend is not into knives at all. But my knife friends are so into knives, and sometimes I see them once a year, once every two years. It's like I saw them last week. You know, it, it's, it's handshakes, hugs, high fives, you know, just uh, having a beer, chat. It's like my friend Brian. He came to Blade for the first time, and I was super stoked. You know, as he, he said he was going to come to Blade last year, but it got canceled by COVID. But, you know, he came down, and I'm so glad he did. We hung out, like, Friday night at the pits, hung out some part of Saturday, and hung out again on Saturday night at the pits. It, you know, it's like I, I, I did meet him for years, and then it's just like, I, it's like it didn't feel like it was the first time hanging out with him because we're, we're such good friends, and we just sit there, like, just swapping knives, looking at each other's knives and stuff, going through the collections, it, and, and have a beer over it, all of this. You know, it was a lot of fun. All right, so... Plan, start planning for next year's blade if you haven't. You know, uh, take the time out, reserve your hotel rooms or whatnot, or you know, if you have some buddies in Atlanta, just you know, stay with them for a weekend. You know, go through it. You know, buy them a knife or ranch or something like I did, <laughs> and and enjoy yourself because you owe it to yourself as a knife enthusiast. All right, don't don't just go there and check out the spider and the bench mates. You can check out out three three hundred sixty five days out of the year. You know, a lot of these knives you only see in person. So go see them in person, you know, while they're still there. You know, it's like this Demco. People rush to get the Demco on Friday, rush to get on Saturday. I still went back on Sunday, still picked one up. Granted, most of the atoms were, you know, most of the neutrons were gone, you know, and stuff. But, you know, it's just sometimes 
some of these cooler stuff, they're gone by Friday, you know, or they're gone by Saturday. And sometimes you go look at things where some makers aren't social media savvy, they're not very into the internet, and they still have world-class work. Just because they're better at making knives than marketing themselves is all, is, you know, it's more reason why you should check them out. Because sometimes the people who spend so much more time on Instagram, well, they're displacing the time, you know, that they should be making knives and improving their skills. Not to call any names out, but there's definitely some, you know, at the show where you're just like, man, this is kind of a ripoff. And there's some just like, wow, how, it's like, you're asking so little for this. But if I have room in my collection for this, I would totally buy this, but I just don't have the room or the money right now. So there you have it. You know, a little bit of talk about Blaze Show. Uh, and also showing my scores. I also picked up some handle material, some leather, and you know other knife making stuff. So I figure you guys are probably not that interested in. Um, if you want me to have more of in depth video on any of these, please comment down below, and I'll see about throwing one together. Um, assuming that I, I will still own them, but I think it's one of those. I think I will own all of these. I don't plan on selling any of these anytime soon. Um, I did list my AD uh, twenty, but you know if it doesn't sell, it's not going to bother me um, because I'm perfectly fine you know, being stuck with this, you know, that, that's another part of the thing I want to talk about is like, you know, buy what you're be with, what you're willing to be stuck with. Um, don't always count on having, you know, be able to flip something, you know, because that's how you end up being a little more disappointed in this. Um, you know, buy what you love, enjoy what you love. Don't chase trends. You know, none of these are, well, I guess these two are kind of trendy knives and maybe the, the American, but you know, I don't, I really didn't follow him until like the day of the show. So just get what you want Enjoy what you enjoy, and you'll walk away from the show a lot happier than, you know, the people who missed out on, you know, the makers who went to TKI the previous weekend and couldn't make it through this show. So there you have it. Uh, I think I could I can rent this off for another three hours if it, if it needs to go, and it's already, you know, creeping up on like 40 minutes. So, yeah, let me know if you want any detailed videos on these. And uh, until next time, thank you for watching. Have a good one. Bye.